Okay. Are we all ready? Yes. Great. Where's my and uh, I appreciate everybody's indulgence. I'm calling the meeting of the design review committee uh, to order at uh, 23 minutes after this five. Um, may I please have a roll call vote? Member Dryden Hess. Absent. Member Martin? Present. Member Lapp? Here. Vice Chair Jacobson Bates? Here. Chair Kavanaugh? Here. Thank you. Let's uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Everyone had an opportunity to review the agenda that's been sent out. Appreciate the staff's effort and the planning manager's efforts to provide those materials to us in a timely way. Um, so, um, to uh, is the order of the agenda as presented now. Acceptable. I'd like to request that we pull item 2E from the consent agenda. That's okay. during the that's during the consent items. They're just requesting yeah, what we're just going to get the, oh, agenda. Just the regular agenda. Yeah, the agenda item and then we'll uh, consent items and the, the other items are uh, the other items on the agenda will come approved. Now then the next item will be the consent agenda. That's when we'll entertain uh okay. Request to pull it an item. So I I move that we approve the order of agenda as presented. Okay, I second that. Moved and seconded. Um, you want to call a roll on that? Thank Mem you. Member Dryden Hess, absent. Member Martin. Member Lapp. Yes. Vice Chair Jacobson Bates. Yes. Chair Kavanaugh. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is the. Um, Consent items, these are typically routine and will be approved in one motion. There's a number of them that were uh, reflected in the uh, uh, on the uh, in the agenda for today. Um, and uh, the committee is, um, uh, this, these are items then that the, uh, the committee will uh, act on without being, uh, or with, without uh, further uh, review at this point. Uh, are there any changes to that consent item list uh, by uh, proposed by any members of the committee? Okay, now I will ask if we can pull item 2B. Okay, does that require a vote? Yes. Okay, is there a second on that uh, motion to pull item E from the consent agenda? I second it. Okay, moved and seconded. May we please have a, a, a roll call vote? Member Dryden Hess, absent. Member Martin? Yes. Member Lapp? Yes. Vice Chair Jacobson Bates? Yes. Chair Kavanaugh? Yes. Um, will Chair now make a motion to approve the remaining portions of the agenda so we can discuss item or excuse me, we can discuss an item on this? Um, Okay, so we're starting with item 2E. Just a minute, I want to make sure I said it, but I still also have to give the members of the public that are here an opportunity to address those items on Sim the consent agenda. Is that simply right? for item E, um, my suggestion is to move in uh, motion to approve the rest of the consent, consent items except for item E. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the agenda that, that's been distributed. The chair will call on anyone wishing to address the committee on any consent item on the agenda which has not been pulled by the committee for discussion. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak on any item on consent? So that's the sign. Okay, anyone seeing that, thank Zoom? you. Yeah. Anyone uh, on Zoom, that would be with you. Wishing to speak. Okay. Thank you. Then we'll thank you. We'll move ahead then and uh, uh, 
go to the item that's been pulled. Uh, you need to make you, oh. you need a motion to approve every item except for item E. Okay, then I, I accept the motion to accept all the items but item E, which has been pulled from the consent item uh, agenda. Uh, may I please have a motion to approve those uh, items A through um, G, except for item E? So moved. Okay, I can second. I moved and seconded. Uh, before we have a vote on this, I want to roll call vote, please. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'll say what I was going to say later then. Uh, may we have uh, a roll call vote on that? Member Dryden Hess? Absent. Member Martin? Yes. Member Lapp? Yes. Vice Chair Jacobson Bates? Yes. Chair Kavanaugh? Yes. We'll, get, we'll leave it at that for at this point. Um, okay, so let's see. We have at this point we have a, a section provi- uh, provided uh, intended to provide members of the public an opportunity to address the committee. Um, on chair, we now discuss item E. Oh, on agenda. Now we're just okay. Yes. Oh, it's up through. Okay, go ahead, please. Approval land use permit for 436 Alisal Road Suite H for proposed on site signage, one 2.5 square foot projecting sign, one four square foot wall sign. The proposed project is categorically categorically exempt from CEQA. Okay. So I'm the one that asked to pull this for discussion. Uh, my concern is in regards to the placement of the sign that is on the windmill, on the shingle portion of the windmill. Uh, there has been a non-conforming sign there for an extended period of time. Um, it's such a high visibility location um, in an kind of unorthodox um, uh fit there because it's not a vertical uh, wall. It is a portion of the kind of tilted angle, the windmill. And um, I am opposed to having a sign there. I would like to have my colleagues uh, consider that as you look at the locations here and see if there's an alternative. The projecting sign on the bracket um, fits within. Appreciate the fact that the signs are being made to have a dimension to them and um, fit within the kind of aesthetic of our town in a better way, especially since they you know have been there for a significant period of time and not um, had such a a good look to them. So I would like to consider that we don't at this time have in mind an alternative location for the sign. I'd like to to potentially split this into two votes to approve uh, the wall sign that's projecting versus the wall sign um, that's uh, on the windmill itself. Does that seem like a acceptable way of handling this? No, you would need to bring back the item as a whole. So my suggestion is yeah. to either uh, vote on the item as is, um, and then or, or, or many, uh, bring uh, it many. back, or or subsequently send it back to staff for review and work with the applicant on the placement. Um, reviewing the code itself, the the code has standards of where the placement is. Wall saw may be attached, flat against, or pinned away from the wall. A wall may be a wall sign placed uh, at the space between windows and the same starting shot. I see more than two thirds of the height of a window. So in that aspect, it, it or um, major architectural details related there too. So while the placement of a, such a sign is tough and I understand that um, there is, for what you're requesting, the city staff doesn't see sort of an exception to that. To an exception to can you clarify that for me? Well, uh, as in there's there's you you had mentioned that it was there was a non-conforming sign. There, there's no sign that's there now, um, and so I I'm I guess I'm... there there is a sign there now on on the windmill. 
I was in looking at it, hoping that there was an alternative location that's not actually on the shingles on the windmill. In fact, not on the windmills because it's such a visible landmark. Well, it, it's not on the windmill itself. It's on the shingles. It's on the shingles. So um, I would suggest if there's an alternative location that the DRC has in mind that they would provide that alternative now and potentially approve the wall sign with the alternative location versus yeah. bringing the item back. Yeah, and perhaps um, we do have, I see Brian from um, 805 Signs in the room. I'm not sure if he's representing the applicant. Um, if there might be an alternative in mind that could be proposed or um, put forth. Hello. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so they've had that sign there forever, and it was home bridge before, and yes. they've always kind of been temporary flat signs. Yeah. But the hooks, we didn't put them in. I don't know what was there before home bridge, but they've been there for a long time. Uh, it, it's essentially a shingled wall, and I know the top of it's the windmill. But other than that, there's the uh, the walkway fencing. But I don't know what rule we would do to amount to that. You know, to, to the railing, because uh, around that that whole windmill is is shingle wall. Yes. Um, the bracket sign's no brainer. The other one is just always had one there. There's actually a little lamp up above it. I mean, I, I don't know how far back all that that goes, but I see a shingle wall. Yes. Right, and, and yeah. I understand it's a historical and a kind of angled shingle wall. Yeah, um, it's a slight angle, so the sign kind of is moved against it. I wonder if there's, I don't know if if ownership allows, because there is the stairwell where it could potentially be on the wall that says upstairs or something of that sort. Um, so it's kind of next to the uh, gelato, I think it is there, yeah, sign. It's all being gelato. Yeah. But in other there, words, there is a wall space right to the right of that sign. Correct. So we could just shrink that instead of four foot, it's what two foot or whatever size fits in that space. I don't know what that measurement is. That that would have been that would be my suggestion mm -hmm. to put something that indicates that it is upstairs so that it could leave the one that projects from the windmill, but the other one be moved down below. Yeah. 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 Or we yeah, yeah, I, I comment on I, I don't know. Is anyone from TNG here? No. Um, so I'm not sure. I know they wanted that sign there, but if we have to do it below, we'll do it below. You know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, without the applicant here to yes. agree to that, um you, you could you could in theory. Um, recommend approval with the wall sign, and the applicant can um, can appeal the decision. Or you can send the item back to staff, and city staff will work with the applicant in finalizing a, a wall location. Um, that, those are your options. I like the second option. Second. Yeah, I, I think that would work too, because then I can send to them what it's going to be, and if they don't like it, then then they can choose to come back. I know they've already waited about three months because the guy got COVID and a few things. And, mm -hmm. You know, September was closed. So um, they have temporary there now, which is just a rebase on the existing signs. So I know they want to get approved for something. So maybe if that's the alternative, we we mount it on that wall space by the stairway, make it smaller, and I can send to staff the update. Did you craft a motion to refer it back to staff? To, uh, so, Brian, it, I think that the, the, owner. the consensus here is that um, there's not ready to make the motion tonight. I'd like to have it come back. So I move that um, that the project be tabled for further. Am I allowed? No. The, the, that the item be um, returned to the returned to DRC. Yeah, and with direction to work with the uh, with the owner on the alternative placement. That is correct. That's the motion. Okay. Thank you. I second the motion. <laughs> and what does that mean? Come back in in thirty days or what? Okay. Yes. Okay. I can send that over. And the reason for not allowing a wall sign on shingles is because it's a windmill? Because it's a high profile location. It's not a vertical wall. 
Um, and because it's a windmill. Is vertical wall a uh, definition? Well, it's an angled wall. And is that in the ordinance, though? I'm kind no, of curious no. where, where that no. finding is. We are asking if the applicant would work on alternatives given the historic nature of the location. That's the issue. Just... Yes. Okay. So we'd I... like to work with them and find an alternative. I can pass that on. Rafael? The, the, it's not defined in the ordinance. So in I you know, while I understand that the, the nature of, of that, it, it's not defined. Correct. And so, you know, there there's if, if the applicant were to come back, it, your your findings would for the deny, denial would have to be crafted within the ordinance. It's, it's just a, a heads up um that well, yeah. per, am I understanding, Brian, that there's um, a move from the applicant would like to be able to proceed with getting the final signage? Colleagues, if I, I'd like to potentially propose a motion that would allow them an alternative location that we could approve tonight to have them be able to move forward. And then they can return if they don't agree with that, with that as an alternative to meet I'm the timeline. That good. That, that's what I'm thinking would be nice. Cause then I, if we can do a, a one foot by two foot sign by the gelato one, you know, on the stairway, if, if that's the, I want it there and just make sure it's the right size, it'll be within ordinance letter height and everything will still be there. So if, if you could do a motion to put it there instead and then accept the projecting sign, and then we have to show staff what that sign looks like on the wall. Uh, is that kind of what you're leaning towards? Yes. Yeah. I think that they would probably be happy with that. And it'd be a great space for them too. And it could kind of have a little arrow or something. Right. You know, I think it's kind of a win-win. It preserves that historic kind of visual corridor and it also shows off their business at a location right. that, um, you know, catches people at a street level. I'd be happy to, to take them through with that. You know, and if they say no, we really want the one up there, then well, they, they can have to return, pay yes. and come back in or whatever, and return and show it again. Yes, Rafael. Yes, so um, you did have a motion just for point of order. You did have a motion, Vice Chair Bates. Um, my yes. suggestion is to withdraw that motion, yes. uh, reframe that motion. Um, I know there was a discussion um, from Brian in regards to square footages. I believe you mentioned three square feet, correct? Yeah, what is it right now? I put it on to be the... within conforming regulations for the placement on the wall. Yes, and my so, just just to include the, the three square feet. Yes, I would like to start by withdrawing my previous motion and uh, have a new motion to approve the projecting wall sign as presented and approve a alternative location on the wall near the stairwell of a sign that is conforming a maximum of two by one. So that would be two square feet. Yes. Or, or it might, I don't know the size of the space, but the other one was four square feet. So I would think if we did max of three square feet, because then it might become the stack logo instead of the, the horizontal. Right. And it might fit that space better too. Okay, so I'll amend the amended. <laughs> um, to be a maximum of three square feet um, as uh, is conforming with the standards. Second the motion. All right. Thank you. Roll call. You will have a roll call vote, please. Member Dryden Hess, absent. Member Martin? Come. Member Lapp? Yes. Vice Chair Jacobson Bates? Yes. Chair Kavanaugh? Yes. Thank you. Um, thank, you. thank you, Brian, for your willingness to work with us and pass that on to your clients. Okay, we have, uh, I think we've also given the public an opportunity to make any communications at this point. Is that right? No, we have. Oh, they, we do have a couple uh, speakers to sign up. So that's right. Thank you. Okay. The committee welcomes your input. At this time, you may address the committee on items not on the agenda. The time limit is three minutes. Okay. Uh, first person I have is um, Kenny Rosette. Is that it? My item is on the agenda. Yeah, we're here to speak on 4H. 4H, yes. Gabe, so oh, you're here. Oh, you're here. You're not here for public communication that aren't on the agenda. Correct. Okay. They're on the agenda. 
Okay, that's fine. And the same with the second one? Yeah, they're both the same. Okay, great. We're sorry, we misunderstood. But yeah, we're looking at a time just that are for items that are not on the agenda at this point. There's an opportunity for the public to speak if they choose. Anybody here uh, in that category, a non agenda item that they'd like to speak to now? Okay, seeing no one, anyone on Zoom in that category? See none? Okay, then we'll proceed to the next item on the agenda, which uh, relates to the um, possible action to approve land permit, uh, land use permit for the cottage primary care specific diagnostic labs at 1992 Old Mission Drive for a signage proposal. In the material that starts on page 46, or on the on, on, uh, our material. Lisa will be doing the presentation tonight. Good. Um, so cottage primary care is proposing this currently on the screen is the view from the south side of the building um, two wall signs, one for cottage primary care and one for Pacific Diagnostic Laboratories. <clears throat> they are requesting also on the south side of the building, one for cottage primary care. So that's the one that's facing Alamo Pintado right there. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a chart of the uh, sign plan for the mercantile. Um, the only one that is not conforming is a modification for the wall sign, um, which is a max of 24 square feet. Um, they are requesting 55 square feet. However, they are taking up two tenant spaces. Um, mm -hmm. And the project, the proposed project is categor categorically exempt from CEQA. Um, because the proposed on-premise signage is considered a minor alteration of an existing structure that features no expansion of the existing or proposed use. And that concludes the presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, and there were, um, uh, you know, let me see, I'm not sure, are there, uh, we do have some other comments or some communiques that are in the blue folder relating to this item, is that right? Or do you? Yes, that is correct. Okay, so uh, do we, uh, how, how do we bring this I, bring this to the record? I would suggest first to open up to questions from the, or the, from the uh, committee first to city okay. staff, and then from there, um, you can open up the public comments and we can read the comment okay. right under the record. Okay. Any comments about this item uh, among the members of the committee, please? Um, I did note that the staff had um, uh, suggested that the wall signs not exceed the 48 square feet, which would be the equivalent of what would be allowed for two units. Mm -hmm. Right. Is there anything, there's no other signage in that um, mercantile center, like CVS, is all conforming as well. Am I correct in understanding there's no non conforming that presently in that center? Okay. And um, there are lit signs in that center presently. Yes. That, that's, yes. Yes. yes, that's correct. Are all the businesses lit in there? So, yeah. I believe so. Uh, and are CVS they, is, is there a limit? to the hours that they're lit in that area um, or their ordinances in, mm. as to that effect? The limits to the lighting would be a part of the um, sign program. So we can we can take a look at that um, okay. just in case, but um, typically uh, good business practices are to turn those dark um, when when you're not in business. So, Correct, yeah. Um, one, cost saving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. uh, but two, uh, obviously, again, looking at the sign program, um, I, I'm almost confident it does acknowledge that. Okay. And it's frustrating to go by somewhere that's brightly lit and find it closed as well. Yeah, and I think there were limits on the signage where the CVS and um, New Frontiers is um, at the time those facilities were approved. That there were, because of the, 
in response to neighborhood uh, concerns. Yes, that's correct. And and dark sky compliant mm -hmm. compliance as per city codes. And... Okay, that's all the questions I have. Okay. Are there another? Okay, so are there? Um, I I do have at least is it one one comment or is there more? I I see one uh, from uh, Evie Lee. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Are there any additional um, committee member comments? Oh, I'm sorry. Are there any other no. member? Thank you. Then my suggestion is to go ahead and open up a public comment and, and okay. read, read off the letter. Okay, so uh, we're going to open a public comment now to the uh, item uh, that, we're, that we're discussing regarding the uh, land use permit adjustment for the signage at 1992 Old Mission Drive. Anyone in the room uh, want to speak to that? Yeah. Speaker slips. Yeah. Um, may I? Yep. Um, is this? Is yeah, that I think that's where pertinent to this. Okay. We, yeah. We. Yeah, you're going to speak as well. I'm with Kai, so I'd like to. If it, if okay. Let, let's let's. We have a couple of speakers slips here. Let's uh, hear what they have to say, and that may may affect your your message as well. Okay. So Gabe Rosetti. Um, I'm Eber City, um, homeowner and resident here in Solvang, and I'm um, here to voice my opposition to that exception sign, especially the fact that it's lit. This is not a retail business that needs to attract walk-ins. Um, this is not an urgent care. This is where people will come for set appointments. My understanding is their hours are from 8 until 5, so there's no reason for a lit sign because even when daylight savings time is over, it's still lit at five o'clock outside. Um, and the size of the sign is um, kind of out of whack. There is a sign on the corner that says mercantile and every business within that facility has a sign and it's lit. And that's on the corner of the Alamo Pentagon and Old Mission. As this mercantile was being developed, um, I got involved with the City Council, the Planning Commission, and the old EA on that. And there, I came before the City Council when the new Frontier signs were lit, and they were lit 24-7. The City Council suggested that my wife and I get together with um, Jake, the owner of New Frontiers, who agreed to turn his signs off once everybody was out of the building, he, he did that. Three weeks after he did that, the lights went back on 24-7 because the developer, Josh Richmond, told him, no, don't turn any signs off. So those signs are lit constantly. Okay, at, at New Frontiers. At New Frontiers okay. and everywhere else. So there really does need to be some ordinance, and I appreciate your comment, that when businesses are closed. The lights, the exterior lighting gets turned off. Okay, good. There's way too many signs, way too many lights, and way too many signs. Of that. Okay, so we're not opposed to lit signs on the interior of the project. We have a problem with a lit sign facing Old Mission and Alamo Pintado. Okay, and also if you drive by, we drove by there on the way here, there are signs in the windows now Big blue black sign saying cottage is open. So how these things happen is just beyond me. I mean, I, you know, somebody needs to follow the rules. You know, and the letter from 2017 tells Josh Richmond specifically that there are rules to follow, and he continually pushes to break these rules. Okay, great. Thank you for your thank you, Mr. Reddy. Uh, is it Canny? Your first name? Uh, no, it's Harry. Harry. I'm sorry, I, I didn't read that. Read that. Harry Rosetti. Harry Rosetti. Yeah, Solvang resident and historically familiar with the mercantile and the lighting and the signage and and so we're here to just address 
um, the impact that happens on the community with the additional light that's um, being requested to be added on old mission drive. Um, so I'm just going to read my email that I sent to you guys too late, apparently. So I'm just going to read it. Um, why does cottage primary care at the mercantile need an additional large internally illuminated sign at the old mission drive side of the building? Operating hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. by appointment only. This is not an urgent care with nighttime nor weekend hours. This sign will diminish our night sky unnecessarily. Please remember that we are a night sky protecting community as, in, as is written in our city ordinances. This sign will shine into homes and possibly the future homes that Josh is planning on building on the lot directly across the street. This sign will drive vehicles into the shopping center and the neighborhood after the medical facilities are closed. Driving vehicles unnecessarily into the neighborhood and the shopping center presents a safety issue for evening workers, neighborhood residents, and vehicular traffic at the intersection. There already exists an illuminated directional sign at the corner of Old Mission and Alamo Pintado that will serve this facility. This pr proposed large building sign is not needed for the patients to locate their offices. Please do not approve its installation. We have medical offices throughout Solvang and no one has an external illuminated sign for patients to make their uh, appointments with their physicians. This is a primary care physician's office not an urgent care that needs to be sought out at eight or nine o'clock at night. So as a neighborhood adjacent to this um, project or um, shopping center, we really need to um, assess that, you know, the necessity of a, of a sign right there on Old Mission Drive. Um, it, to me, it's, it's completely unnecessary to be there at all. Um, and then to illuminate it from the inside is, it's offensive and it and causes impact on the neighborhood in a negative way. So I suggest you decline. Thank you so much. And your your letter did, we did receive the letter. Uh, it has been distributed. People say this is the same letter she did awesome. read. Thank you. Oh, this is the same. Yeah, letter. and actually, this is it. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Um, are, are there any other comments uh, regarding this matter? Did you want to speak sure, down, please? Thanks. Okay. Yep. Um, appreciate you're here. Uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to uh, discuss our proposed signage. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Scott Allen. I'm the director of construction at Cottage. Um, I've been involved with um, the uh, San Inez Valley College Hospital Project, um, the things we've done there, as well as this uh, clinic. Um, and Cottage is, again, committed to uh, serving the San Inez Valley and um, wanted to pick up where Dignity left off and continue to have a strong circle here in the uh, Valley with uh, primary care. And thus we uh, um, uh, took over that lease for Dignity um, and that uh, shopping plaza. Um, with respect to the signage, uh, we are asking for a modification um, that is above the square footage on the one on the one elevation. Um, we feel that there is some um, the the COVID the ambiguous a little bit of how the square footage is is um, derived. I believe this square footage was calculated with a four line version of the signage. And uh, that's fine, uh, but our logo has a very large logo C, and our letters are fairly, the text is fairly small compared to that C, and we have uh, maintained the maximum height of the letter C, which is three feet. Um, but even though we're above the square footage, there is a fair amount of empty space 
in that sign. Um, and uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, square footage or, or size to the sign. Uh, so we feel it's very reasonable um, and it's actually smaller than the previous sign that they maybe had, um, actually quite a bit smaller. So um, we feel our request is re reasonable for this modification. Um, and also um, to help with your concerns, uh, we will only put the sign lit during business hours. Um, and, you know, all, all both elevations, the front and the back. Um, we do not want to make it look like we're open after hours. Uh, and I don't know our exact hours just yet, but um, if we're at five or six p.m., but after that, the uh, signs will be uh, turned off. It will be dark. Okay, after what, whatever uh, after their closing okay. time. You know, I'm not sure the hours. Uh, uh, I just text uh, the manager and uh, see what uh, they are proposing. But it would be the five or six. Okay, I would know later than six. But they will be okay. they will be turned off. Um, we have 15 urgent cares that are a similar model uh, in the three counties, and uh, they're open till 8 p.m. and we turn the lights off after 8 p.m. Okay, uh, we do not want to make them like we're open. After hours, yeah, and sure. uh, also we are installing a, a dimmer uh, to um, address any issues that may come up. So we have that in our toolbox just in case. Okay, so you were supporting us to be a, a good neighbor, and um, uh, hopefully uh, our proposal is um, fits the the uh, neighborhood and the community. Um, and um, welcome your your comments. Okay, great. Do you have any comments or questions? You're, I'm sorry, tell me your name again. Uh, my name is Scott Allen. Scott Allen, okay, thank you. A L O E N. Any any questions or comments? Um, yeah, please. Ça aussi, if uh, the sign of new frontier has been accepted, and you cannot come back on that, right? Because they were supposed to. It has been, uh, that, that's been approved when that project was done, yeah. Really yeah, it, it, it's it's been approved, and um, thank you for the discussion, by the way, because um, that gave me time to actually look up their <laughs> conditions of approval. <laughs> and, and so uh, there there are some uh, conditions uh, to this center that uh, if the property owners want to see me after the meeting, they most certainly can, and we can discuss. And we can talk about that during committee comments, maybe at the end of the meeting. I, I would suggest leaving that outside of. Okay. comments and have the um, neighbors come discuss it with myself because it would involve a code compliance issue. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I, I don't know if you, did you hear that? Uh, was that his, he, he's looked up the conditions that the uh, lighting of the facilities that are there now were subject to, is that right? And welcome to the, and look those up online. So he's in a position uh, to Talk to you about the uh, the issues that that might present, and I think uh, offers to meet with you after this meeting on it rather than engage in the con. Yes, this is uh, yeah the uh, planning manager Raphael. Okay, uh, are there any other questions or comments of the of of any of the parties that have commented regarding the, the application? Um, not at this time, but perhaps in a minute. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, so the, the recommendation of the staff at, at this point is though to approve the, the proposed sign package. And that I thought that includes a 22 square foot wall sign and two wall signs totaling 48 square feet. Is that still the uh, the proposal that's the, being recommended by staff? Yes. Okay. Any comments? Well, I perhaps leading with um, the lighting and coming back to the scale of the signage that if there is going to be lighting on the side that faces the residents directly across the street, so the part facing Old Mill Road. I understand that there's a sign there. Am I reading that correctly? Or Old Mission, excuse me, Old Mission Drive there. Yeah. Um, that 
I think that should not be lit um, because of the proximity to the residential uh, neighborhood there um, would be a consideration. With these interior the interior locations facing the uh, parking in front of the building uh, because there is a precedent set within that shopping center and um, that there would be, I believe we should have specific limitations written into approval that the lights are only allowed to be utilized during business hours. And I spoke about frustration because one night I went to New Frontiers. Oh, great. They're open. Mm -hmm. I got out. Oh, parking space right in front. And um, yes, they were closed, but they were very well illuminated. So I think that for multiple reasons um, that that should be written into the decision, whatever size the signs. I understand that it's a double unit so that there's a request for additional signage. And this is encompassing both the Pacific Diagnostic Laboratories and the Cottage um, in Store Frontier. Um, and understanding that there may be some less prominent area within the sign, but I would like to, I think that it's important to stay within the guidelines for maximum size for I would rather see it be with one unit, but certainly should not exceed the 48 square feet, um, which would be encompassing the two unit maximum with, as opposed to one. And I'm sure my colleagues have some thoughts about that. You know, my, my question is, is there something in the in the code that says, well, if, if, the, if it's one tenant, it's only two spaces, but this is just sort of suggestion of how we get to 48 instead of a larger number. By having by taking and applying to one tenant, uh, the double the this, this what would be required normally. So the sign plan for the mark mercantile is per tenant space. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the twenty four square feet per tenant space. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Some concerns that come to mind also are in relationship to not just the mercantile, but looking at going forward. There's a large you know, project coming across the street there with Samsung Clinic, that these these items I'm sure are going to come back up to be revisited. So, you know, we need to really consider it not just for the, the project here, but the precedent that's set as well. Okay, any other comments? Staff, do you have any other comments? That are, okay, anybody else on the committee? Can I? Yes, I'm please. The, uh, can I speak? Of course. My name is Young, and we fabricate sign for cottage in Hmong from the hospital from San Diego up to San Luis Obispo. And typically, I'm the person who goes and applies for permit to make the signs. And in the past, 40 years that I'm in business, typically we try to abide with the city, especially the master program. Uh, each uh, complex or building or commercial industry that builds something within the city, they would normally have a master sign program so it could alleviate less work for the city because you have to comply with that guideline. And in a sense, we pretty much combined with the guideline that was given to us, at least given to me, uh, because cottage actually occupied four suits from D1 to D4 or 110 to 140, when first bank occupied 150. So when you say uh, cottage occupied two suites, they actually occupied four uh, in that complex. Uh, and in the mass assigned program, uh, which is approved by the city that each tenant allowed 24 square feet of signage. So we uh, abide by what, what is said right there. And within that guideline, it says maximum 36-inch logo 
and a maximum of 18 inch tall letters, we pretty much stay within that. The only part that is not clarified within the sign is that 24 if you occupy four space or 24 if you occupy just one suite because it say 24 square foot per tenant. Uh, so if cottage came in with the scenario of suite one and two, we apply for the logo, which is three by three, less, less than nine square feet. And the word cottage primary care, we apply for a permit of 23 mm -hmm. square feet, which is less than that's what it is. So that's my goal to try to aim to stay within the city guideline that is mm -hmm. prepare at one point with the developer. So if we are changing the ordinance, that should be something you need to give it to us to abide by. So when we come up with this, we pretty much try to stay within the guideline of the city. And so the proposed plan was those sizes. And within the master plan, they say we allow this for the sign, we allow X amount size for the directory. And so we did. Uh, the only thing that the discrepancy between city is that let's say you walk to Santa Maria, they calculate square footage by a six sided box. Let's say on sign, you can take the largest part, the largest side to side, and the bottom. You calculate that in a four sided box. Where Santa Maria and most of the other city have a six sided box, which means the local could be large and they could assume that text could be smaller. So they allow a six sided box, which is uh, in this scenario where they could be held with the proof, somehow we see the calculate at eight sided box, and this side is quite large. And you can see the uh, patch on the wall that is even larger than. But cottage approved, I mean, I proposed. So, what I did is to make sure that we are with staying within the guideline was given to us is that at, in 2000, Dignity Health got approved for this sign. Mm -hmm. At the same scale, we brought it up. And this is in the comparison of what it was and what is now that we're proposing, uh, to scale to what was uh, approved at one point with the city uh, for dignity health. So the point what I'm saying is that this is an eight, eight sided box with a dotted red line. What we did is for most city that we calculate is that's a six sided box. So that's how we arrive at 32 square feet. But when you take a four sided box, which yeah. it does it does not then you have that space above, yeah. You can the end up wall. yeah. You end up calculating negative space, right? So, in if you calculate negative space, you actually more than what I know. Okay. Fair so, enough, that, that's that's a good point because I mean, that's you know, a good thing, yeah. So, you so in, in the Oops. sense that if, if it is a code thing that we need to abide by, I think some at some point maybe. That could be written into the code on right. I, I understand that. That's, that's a good suggestion because I think what we're what we're stuck with, or what we're we're applying, I think. I don't know what it's stuck with, I don't think, is a four-sided box. Yeah. We're just finding the area of a four-sided box and saying, okay, that's what we're when we define the square footage of a light. Yeah. So, so, so we, let's say go to eight or yeah, ten, so, uh, ten yeah, we, we agree you on the four sided C, box. And then, then it's uh so when we agree and then also on the, reduces the lighting, I guess. No, so if we are doing on the four-sided box. Square footage. Could our client come in and say, you know, we want to put a logo, a three by three logo, right here on this unit, right with the big C, and then we want to put the word primary cottage, primary care, right here, and it's still under twenty four square feet. That's it. So that, in the sense that yeah. we kind of are lost in trying to figure out what the city allow us to do. I know primary care. Or urgent care or hospital is something I look at it like life and safety. It's almost something we need, but sometimes when we don't need it, we just chuck it aside. But it is something. Isn't it true also though? If you stick with the four sided box, there's there's more. I guess you call it negative space, but it, there's more light above and below the 
No, this Cubs building primary care. Yeah, this building is a a dark wood thing, and they have black letters. Yeah, and black letters. The only thing that is somehow contrast again the gray background, so you really don't see it actually. The only time you will see it is some sort of light coming through it. Where as we talked about, though, we talked about internal lips. Yeah, in, the internal lip, but when it's not lit during the daytime, the, the sunlight is brighter than sure, sure. So you only see black. But when you look at black in the background of the building, it really looks totally blending in the background. Okay. Where would this is, it would stand out if the building is white, but it's not. So when you I see it, I have a question. Yeah, please. So looking at the site block plans, do you think that has the indications? Yes. Uh -huh. Is that a mistake where it says ST1 in the northeast corner next to ST4 and 5? Because it doesn't match up with the proposed sign site. Two, there are some signs that are real. The small directory four and five or six, four, five, and what eight, nine, and six, one? seven, and one. Uh, no, sign one is the main sign, but on, on this particular sheet, it's also says site one. Okay. SP one, that's sign type one. So it's is it it's the same size sign on the front and the back? Okay, yeah. is that what that was my concern? There you go. No, the, the size are different. Okay, if you look at the sheet three that we have. That's a fun sign. I think it should say sign two. Yeah, it's or SD2. It should oh. say SD2. Okay, so which oh. one is SD2? The, SD2. Which one? Is SD2 is the one on the, the oh. back corner. Yeah. So the one facing Old Mission? This one right here? Yes. That's right. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the one is in Old Mission. Yeah, okay. it's right on the corner there next to the on the building. And if you look at how this is proposed, this one, this should be, this is ST2, but it's a mistake if it's on there. Okay. okay. That explains why I couldn't quite figure some of this stuff out. Okay. I thought it was me not being good with directions because I'm good. not. <laughs> okay. You see what we're, we're talking about here? Oh, shoot. Yes, there's a type. Yeah. yeah, there's a yeah, type over there. there. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, is the, uh, is the issue, oh, yeah, please. The issues was about the lighting. So the sign very fine, but we need to know what would be lit. Is it just the C here? Would it be really turn of at six? In that case, we have to ask new frontier to turn their light to oh. so we need, on. The, I think on the we need spine, some consistent the would be lit, but all the oh. when the light is on, you would have this uh, lit too. The black part on the word cottage primary care is a 3M film. Typically, in the daytime, when the suns are brighter, it looks totally black. You don't see the light. Oh, I see. But now that if we are chair allowed to have the light at night, it would be only during the dust hour until they close so that it actually looked like grayish. And only when it's totally dark, then you will see it become white. Could the light be beam? Yeah, there's a, we will put dimmer on it. And so. same with this, okay? Yeah, we can we put dimmer and timer on so that you can adjust how bright it is. Okay. Okay. So uh, for us, it's just that if we, we I'm trying to find yeah, your yeah. guideline and say within your guideline. I appreciate so that. That's why I yeah, appreciate that. Propose like that. Okay. Can staff maybe speak to that? The measurements. Uh, I, I know there was a very spirited discussion of measurements of whether it's four sided, six sided, but our code says neither of those. Our code is very clear. You need to measure it two D based on the square box as much as possible. So the measurements are what is what is in front of you. Uh, again. Um, it's uh, city staff is recommending the, the 48 square feet for the two um, for the two suites that was indicated in our application. If there's a mistake of more than two suites, then that should have been noted in the application. Um, with that being said, uh, as far as the hours of operations go uh, during business hours, that's perfectly fine. Um, that for this sign can be applied uh, um, and we would make uh, the reflection as a part of any uh, approval letter that we issue uh, to the applicant. 
um, if the if, you know the project most likely will need to be scaled to at least be down to 48 square feet as opposed to the 50 you know the above what would be scaled down would it be all the signs would be scaled down proportionately or is there something that would be one sign would be scaled down other would be left big how would I, I mean, we the sign ordinance is clear about what we take as measurements. So really, that latitude would go to the applicant as long as the signs, the wall sign is under 48 square feet. So if they want to adjust the C, they can adjust the C. There, and there are many ways to make an adjustment. Okay, but that would be left up to the applicant. And in what I'm asking about too is that these signs are in different locations to make up this this total square footage, if I understand correctly. So <clears throat> the the wall, so we're specifically talking about the wall sign that's facing the parking lot. The back sign, that actually is in conformance with our code. Okay, sign, you know, sign two. Sign two, that is okay. correct. How many square feet was that one? 22 square feet. So that one, that's good. As a matter of fact, they, if they would have just proposed that one, that wouldn't even have to come to DRP. Um, that's what the sign program tells us. So, uh, you know, that, that one's fine. And But again, it from public comments and from what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, your concerns are about hours of, of illumination, not necessarily the size. And 48 square feet. And, and size. Well, the, the, the 48 square feet is for the front. Correct, sign, and, sign yeah. one. Sign one. Yeah, but no, it, my concerns reflect those that we've heard from the neighborhood, which is both size and illumination. Did, any well, comments I can about? speak uh, on behalf of probably college because college have their own marketing department. And so if we have to reduce the size, everything we have to reduce proportionally. Sure. Because that's yeah. how you can't ask the corporate people say, yeah, I can't change nothing. Yeah. I can't do that. The logo is the logo. Yeah, the logo is the logo is the logo. Yeah. Got it. That's why I was asking a little bit about how that's interpreted. So shrink a bit. Yes. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, may I yeah, make please. a motion? Right. Um, so I move that the project be approved with the provision that the sign one, did I get that right? Mm -hmm. uh, conform to a maximum of 48 square feet that uh, sign two that's facing old mission drive not be illuminated. I don't know if we'll... The other lights there are illuminated though right now. Yeah. Everything has been yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's these. It's, no, so the phone are just a flat piece of yeah. Oh, okay. They're down there. Yeah. They project it like. Okay. Are there lights on? Are there signs currently oh, here, here, facing? Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, yes. Are there other signs currently facing Mission Drive? This is a staff question. Sorry, uh, are there signs on the mercantile facing Mission Drive that are illuminated? Are the interior, excuse me, old Mission Drive that are illuminated? Do we know the answer? I didn't, that's why I don't believe that there are. That they face the interior or Alma Pantado. Yeah, the parking area towards Mission Drive or Alma Pantado. Facing the parking lot and the yes. CVS. Say they're all facing. So that is why the motion includes no illumination on the side that is facing old mission drive. Isn't that per the master plan for that sign to be uh, illuminated? Mm -hmm. We're allowed to do that for the master plan of that site. That is correct. The master plan does allow for illumination. We can, I think cottage would, I think I would comply with and agree with the neighbors that we can dim it and then control the light when it's on and off. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at the time frame right now, probably the darkest we've ever put yet, 
And so at five something, you probably was dark already. And the business still was in business. Additionally, the previous dignity health uh, sign, which I'm looking at now, appears to also be illuminated. It was. It was illuminated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'm hearing is that the agreement, the sign agreement with the, t the tenant or the owner at the mercantile does allow for that. Am I understanding that correctly, Raphael? Yes, that is correct. And that's part of your packet. Yes. Okay. Just to confirm that. Okay. And I'd like an eight to five. So I'd like to abandon that motion or amend that emotion oh. to how do you may I answer? Yeah. Uh, uh, Committee member, I'm getting my commission in committee. Yeah. Uh, committee member, uh, uh, no, there is no uh, time frame, and so uh, I would strongly urge that uh, the committee actually add a time frame to this yes. to the sign uh, specifically. And then again, um, based on the discussions we've heard, I, I will go back to code compliance and have a further discussion about the remaining signs. Thank you. Okay, so should I amend my motion? Okay, so um, I move that the signage be approved with the reduction in sign one to be a maximum of 48 square feet and that any illumination be reserved strictly to hours of business operation. I second that. Okay. Been moved and yeah. seconded. Is there any? It was moved to the first because Ruth Frontier was supposed to do that and he did not. And it has moved to number four. So, we'll, so the New Frontiers is not an item for discussion this evening. Um, ah. However, I will make a note of that and talk to city staff in regards to that based on the development plans, conditions of approval. Yeah. Okay. It's been seconded. Any other? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Do a vote. Yeah, let's go ahead. Have a, have a vote. Member Dryden Hess, absent. Member Martin? Member Lapp? Yes. Vice Chair Jacobson Bates? Yes. Chair Kavanaugh? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Could I just make a comment to sure. applicants? If we are all excited, I think, to have additional health care options here in the Valley, in particular primary care. I just had my wellness visit today, and it's really hard to get care. So we welcome the additional uh, uh, opportunities for medical care here in the area. Thank you. May I suggest, sorry, um, I'm, I'm totally strictly into to combining with the uh, Code. It ought to be in the code book with the city, any kind of ordinance that you make so that people like us know how to follow the direction so that we don't become a point of sore eye in front of our neighbor. In this case, uh, the couple here. I mean, I I totally agree with you are where you're coming from because I live in a town. That is no stop sign. I mean, no stop light. And we stuck for it, but part of how it became that is that ordinance was put out and it's spelled out so, so that folks like us can follow the path and try to stay within the path. That's why I came up with this kind of scenario because, you know, I could have a guy coming in and say, I want just that logo right now, and I come back. I want that side right there. And technically, the city had to stuck with it. Okay. So, but unless it's styled out within the master plan and put in the master plan with that project, uh, then you don't have questions. Yeah, we have an obligation to make sure that uh, the expectations of the public and you know whether you're a, a vendor or a, a customer yeah. are those you're a or a resident that. Yeah. Uh, those expectations are uh, are understood by all. Yeah, because I, I like to walk out of here knowing that my the neighbor here is in peace with me. That's, That's all we understand. Thank you. Th thanks for your comments. We appreciate your help there. I'm sure the staff noted that. Okay. Um, so yeah, we took the vote on that, and uh, the other 
item, and I think we've gotten all of the materials through the, the letters that we uh, included. And I appreciate you. You read the uh, your letter, and it's the same as as we got by email as well. And I, I know you sent that. You did send that in. Okay. The uh, next item on the agenda is committee member comments. Um, one thing I have, I know it's been a, a couple items that I, I want to just uh, either have uh, heads up now, or maybe it'd be better to look at it as a uh, heads up at a later meeting, but is an issue that is sort of appearing in social media and so forth. And it's about two of the projects that are on the um, uh, project uh, current project status report from the Planning and Building Division. One relates to the uh, Alvo Pantado Apartments. It's a 108-unit affordable housing project of, under Builder's Remedy. And the other one that's noted uh, is um, the uh, 670 Alvo Pantado Road, the 32 condominium project in five buildings. Um, I, you know, I I know our role is good is obviously defined by the code and and uh, it was, it's uh, working its way through the approval process with the city and planning commission and so forth. I I just I think we would like I'd like to know as a member of this committee you know what our expectations are around that and timing and so forth because I know there are uh, going to be there is uh, you know. Uh, a building, uh, you know, interest in the community about these two projects. Um, it would, on echoing, you know, some of those comments. It, I really in, feel much more informed when the current projects are are allowed to have a bit of discussion during the meeting. It's also really good to hear uh, updates um, on projects that don't seem to be moving for uh, an opportunity to ask questions about projects not moving forward. And I, one of those that comes to mind is the sign at Hotel Cork where they have a temporary sign, um, and there it's on here. And you know the water wheel building is something that is constantly coming up in conversation. Um, as I move in the community, people ask me about. So I'm wondering if this is something that might be considered to not be part of the consent agenda as a routine thing, or if there's a better suggestion as to how to handle that in the future. And perhaps you have some input for us on that. What do you suggest, uh, Raphael? Um, I can discuss that in my comments, but I okay. don't want to. Yeah, if you want further ask if there are any. Well, let, let me ask if there are any other committee comments on any any other matter. And then uh, we go right to uh, staff comments and include that. My, Anybody? Well, my only question was when we have on the consent agenda items with paint, yeah. that it's really, you know, since we don't have samples and you know how the, the actual color is super difficult to see. Any recommendations as to how to handle that? Because honestly, I would I would like to be able to see the samples to be able to have I don't know a chance to comment. If you know, and I guess that's when we pull it from the consent agenda. But we don't have this to see in advance. Is the point? We can get multiple chips from the applicant and include them in your package. When you I think up. that would be really helpful. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. Sure. Good suggestion. Because I, I thought about pulling the project, but because we were stalled in the beginning of the meeting, there was an opportunity for us to look at the color. I still had a couple of questions that I would have liked to have asked. So I think in the future, that would be really helpful. Yeah, we can Thank get you. Great. Any other committee member? Comments at this point, let's go to city staff comments. Well, thank you, Chair. Um, so just really quick um, from a code compliance uh, update uh, for the month of October, there were seven warnings that were given um, by our code compliance officer and then one sign violation that was um, that was also uh, given. So 
uh, from here on out, we'll be doing an oral report. If you oh, it's inside. Just uh, I'm I'm just going to leave it at that. Okay, so, that's fine. Simply because it, they have to weed through the code compliance. That's um, fine. Um, appreciate maze. it. No, I appreciate it. As far as uh, major project updates go, um, the larger one is is site C uh, for Alamo Pintado. Um, that, uh, as noted um, in your um, in your staff reports, their city staff received an application back in October sixth. Um, SB three thirty is a state law enacted back in uh, twenty twenty one, so it has a very strict limitation in terms of what city staff can do processing wise, and um, the number of public meetings we can have for said project. Um, so uh, and unfortunately, you know, there's not much to say. We, we provided what's called a preliminary review letter that was basically looking at the project itself um, and then providing comments of what is required for them to do what's called a complete submittal. The project has to go through, it's, it's a typical uh, project review process, um, which means city staff will review a completed submittal. Um, we will then subsequently turn that around and uh, take it to the DRC at some point in time. Uh, but unfortunately, I, I would highly recommend since this hearing body, since this is a hearing body and you will be hearing about the project to withhold from any comments or discussing this as committee members during these meetings to, um, again, sort of be fair and unbiased to this proposed project. So as much as you want to read on social, me social media, I would strongly urge you to abstain from commenting. I would strongly urge you from abstaining from signing any sort of petition. Um, uh, and uh, you, you chuckle now, but you would no, be a most you new life disqualified for for her petition signing. And and, and just, just wait a little point. Yeah, okay. and to clarify, we're, we're talking about the Alamo Pantado, the the SB three thirty yeah. Richmond project. Yes. 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 The Alamo Pantado. So, yes. Yeah. So that again, that's going to wind through the, our our process, and the state has very strict guidelines. And as as you've been primed before, um, we are very limited in terms of design without objective design standards codified. So it, it would mainly just be a meeting for motions more so than anything else to introduce the project to the DRC, uh, receive some feedback, but but no action would likely be available in terms of um, sending it back for architectural review, et cetera, again, because the city does not have objective design standards. And we are dealing with a project that uh, is a state density bonus project in the uh, California Housing Affordability Accountability Act. So those are two uh, pieces of legislation that have a lot of teeth to them. But again, that's going to be before you in the future. Um, and taking a cue from uh, Vice Chair Bates, that would likely be the only uh, item on the agenda for that meeting and that meeting alone. As far as um, the one that just popped up, um, it is... Uh, Alamon Patado 670. Um, that was actually previously approved back in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so the applicant is proposing an amendment to that. It's actually a floor plan change and that they are also looking at amending the parking that goes to that. Um, so because there's no substantive changes to that, it's already been approved by the DRC. It, it's going straight to planning commission. Yeah. So um, the, 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 uh, the builder's remedy project is... The, oh, uh, and yeah. the, the, the builder's remedy project is the is the uh the one that's really just that was the one I just talked that's about. I know, that's yeah. what you just started uh, you talked about. But then, yeah. I know there this the other one was uh, you know they they had the uh, application in for some time and and, and uh yeah it, it was already processed process yeah. with the planning commission so right so it was already approved um right. so they are looking to amend the approved project hence why it just it's going straight to planning right. commission. And also it's uh, involving what's called a tentative subdivision map. Um, that map expired actually last year. Mm -hmm. um, the, the applicant did not know that. So they're going for what's called a reconsideration to that item. So the amendment yeah. in that map is going to planning commission. But aside from that, nothing has changed from the previous project. Okay. So what about the design of the building? So DRC would have no say? Uh, I can discuss that after the meeting about how state law works with housing, but it's it's a it's called objective design standards. Uh -huh. So you have to be objective, not subjective. And we can uh, su <laughs> submit some idea. <laughs> and so we'll, we can talk later. So okay, okay other um, other city comments and, and so staff comments, please. Um, and then just you mentioned the the water wheel building. That's actually you know a, <clears throat> about a couple brokers uh, 
approach city staff in regards to that. Um, just a lot of ideas so far of what to do with that. As a matter of fact, I was speaking with Lori, uh, our planning consultant, about that earlier this morning. And, and so unfortunately, as much as you know, we want to see that move, um, we are just the position of government. We, we don't own the building. We, we don't own the plans. Um, that is up to the applicant. The applicant has the property owner and the property owner has the, the property for sale. Um, so it, it's really up to them um, as, as developers look at that project, look, as, look at the work that needs to get done. They, they crunch the numbers and uh, to be honest, the, the numbers aren't working. So um, that, that's, that speaks volumes to what was originally proposed and what, the way that our financing markets are working. Uh, so that that's essentially a symptom of the free market. There, there's not much to be done can, um, on that aspect. Can staff circle back with the owner in terms of health and safety issues with the fence and the door and the falling over and access that is, seems to be, besides it being an eyesore, I would lean in on health and safety. Yeah, it's a code compliance issue, uh, more so than anything else, just making sure it's secure. So, um, and I will um, direct code compliance to take a look and, and write a letter there. Um, and that there be some maintenance, you know, of, of, of the area that they, you know, some low level of maintenance so that it isn't a blight hazard well, there. And again, we'll, to, we'll take a look at what's Thank you. codified and, and, and go from there. Um, as far as the, the projects list, though, it, it's really that your edification uh, more so than anything else. Um, I, I'm actually quite hesitant of even producing this list, uh, to be to be honest, uh, simply because there are items as as like Alamo Cortado, the, the SB330, where we, we need to just be very careful about what we present and how we present it. Um, in order to again be be fair, uh, but most certainly that that can um, be an item that we can pull out uh, every quarter to discuss uh, on a quarterly basis. And, um, I, I think that's a, a, to that take. It's it's a very fair take to see what's going on. As far as your December meeting goes, uh, currently we only do have one item that's on the docket for December, um, which means I will likely take the opportunity to have a study session for the uh, DRC. Uh, we actually have a couple things on the docket for a study session. Uh, the first one being the and most important is the outdoor dining. Uh, if you caught the city council meeting, we were directed to write an outdoor dining ordinance. And in that staff report, uh, I had suggested that the DRC take a lead on providing standards for barriers for permanent outdoor dining. So I'm going to be looking towards the DRCs for uh, direction and, and crafting standards. And so what that means is we will provide these standards in the ordinance and uh, therefore, it's been blessed by the DRC, and they can move forward uh, in, in crafting their ordinance based on these barrier standards. So uh, we'll get in a little bit more into it into the study session on that in December. Okay. And with that, uh, that will conclude uh, my comments. Okay, great. Any other comments at this time? Thank you very much. That was good. And I appreciate your admonition, uh, Raphael, to, uh, you know, uh, lose with... Yes. Well, well, they don't they don't sink ships, but uh, you know, I, I have been involved in a project where a commissioner did sign a petition when they they shouldn't have, and when you come across the name, uh, you, you yeah. qualify them. That's so, fair enough. Yeah, they, that's that's a good admonition. We appreciate just, that. Just and again, it's just um, yeah. there will be a time and place to have that discussion, and and so withholding that and 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 knowing that you are pillars of our community, uh, people do tune uh, go to you for information. So. Um, again, as always, I my my door is open, my number is open, not not just for you, but for other members of this community. Sure. Um, I, I always welcome questions and phone calls, and I'll be happy to provide information uh, as needed. Okay, great. City staff, uh, I mean city council, uh, do, do you have any comments to make uh, at this time? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, joining here by Zoom, I'm Chelsea O'Sullivan. Uh, no, I don't have any further comments. I think Raphael handled um, all those issues very well. And um, yeah, happy to be excited to, to join you in December again. And let me know again, if there's questions that I can help with as well, I'm, I'm, my door is open. So please feel free to reach out. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Anything else? I just have one comment. Wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. And we're adjourning the meeting at uh, 642. <laughs> <laughs>